Hello, I'm Professor Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Our topic today is glycogen metabolism. So it's another of the many pieces of the puzzle of metabolism that we've been spending a lot of time uh, uh, on in our journey leading up to this point. But it's not just another piece of the puzzle. What's happening now is that we have enough of the puzzle in front of us that as, as we add each new piece, we start to be able to see a larger picture that was hard to see when we were back looking, beginning just with glycolysis, for example, or even uh, just with the citric acid cycle. So we're going to be looking at glycogen metabolism, but we're also going to be paying a little bit more attention to the broader context of the biochemistry of physiology that lets our bodies work um, and uh, in, in the context of doing that. So let's put glycogen metabolism in context. So this is a diagram that summarizes the major pathways that either converge upon or diverge from glucose 6-phosphate, the phosphorylation product of glucose. And let me remind you of those. Most of them we've already uh, dealt with in detail, and one more we'll deal with in the next segment. So the first one is glycolysis, where uh, glucose through glucose 6-phosphate is uh, degraded to pyruvate. And then remember that pyruvate is what fuels the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria. And so these are very central metabolic processes that we've talked about before. But what's also important now to begin to appreciate <coughs> is that uh, some tissues, brain in particular, and to a lesser degree muscle, are extremely dependent on glucose for their moment-to-moment -moment metabolic needs. And so, in fact, we have to not only understand its metabolism, but we have to understand how glucose levels uh, available to cells are kept constant. And the fundamental way in which that's done is that glucose serum levels levels of glucose in the blood are kept constant by the controlling, by and large, the breakdown and formation of glycogen, which, will, which is symbolized uh, here. Glycogen at the top. And that's going to be our topic today, but let's come back to the two images that I skipped over a little hurriedly there because they're also very important. So uh, gluconeogenesis is something we've not talked about. We're going to talk about in the next segment. This is a, a process that goes on in liver and allows the liver to start with pyruvate or similarly smaller um, building block molecules and rebuild glucose, releasing it back into the circulatory system. The reason that's so important is because of the uh, overall need for all the tissues in the body to have a constant a, a constantly available level of glucose. If glucose levels get too high, it perturbs function of various organs, including the brain. You can go into a into seizure, and in fact, if glucose levels drop too low, the same thing can happen. You can go into a to a, a, a hypoglycemic coma, for example. We'll uh, talk in later uh, uh, topics about uh, diabetes and about the control of blood sugar, but what we're doing today is putting the last pieces uh, in, in place that we need to understand that and understand that absolutely vital process. Uh, glucose homeostasis. Most cells need a, a constantly available uh, level of uh, glucose, not too high, not too low. Uh, we can call it the Goldilocks principle of glucose uh, uh, regulation, for example. Uh, we'll, we'll return. Uh, glucose metabolism is also particularly important because processes like glycolysis, for example, are very fast. They can yield energy very rapidly in contrast to the oxidative phosphorylation that goes on to the mito in the mitochondrion, which is very efficient in terms of yield, but is more sluggish because of all of the different things, uh, proton pumping and so on, that have to go on to allow you to turn the reduced hydrocarbon into um, energy, into functional energy. So glycolysis is fast, and it's what? Oxygen independent. That is, you don't need oxygen. So in a muscle tissue, for example, undergoing vigorous exercise where you're starting to run out of oxygen, glycolysis still works great. So that dependence on glycolysis is one of the reasons why glucose metabolism is so central to the ongoing healthy function of organisms. And so we're putting another piece of the puzzle of glucose metabolism in place here. So as I alluded to, we'll come next topic to talk about gluconeogenesis, how you can rebuild glucose from smaller uh, molecules in the liver and used in the liver can resupply the blood um, with uh, glucose uh, even under starvation conditions where you're having trouble getting glucose from the diet, for example. And here's the glycogen master uh, store again. Here's gluconeogenesis. And then there's, here is the pentose phosphate pathway that we talked about uh, just recently. And so notice that everything is revolving around glucose 6-phosphate. You're either storing it in glycogen, you're making it from gluconeogenesis, or you're distributing it to pentose phosphate pathway or to glycolysis and then on into the TCA cycle. So again, glycogen storage, that is making it, storing glucose, Degrading it, liberating glucose is absolutely crucial to what we 
to, to the moment-to-moment -moment function of essentially every cell in your body. So we're getting the pieces in place to understand that. Let me also emphasize that when you take a whole bunch of glucose residues and you string them together into a massive glycogen molecule, whose structure we're going to talk about in just a moment, you've solved a storage problem. If you try to store glucose molecules as individual molecules, you get tremendous osmotic problems. You're the uh, the uh, osmotic pressure that would build up inside the cell would be uh, difficult to manage. Whereas if you link them all together into a single large molecule, they don't behave in the same way. Uh, and in fact, they don't create that osmo uh, osmotic uh, pressure problem. So you need to store them efficiently, but you need to be able to get to them quickly. And as we'll see, the glycogen molecule lets you do both those things. Store them efficiently, but get to them fast, uh, as you need to do. Okay. So let's now uh, focus on the next important issue. So glycogen metabolism goes on in every cell in your body. So you're, you're probably aware that you have fat deposits in your body, including subcutaneous fat deposits that are used to supply fatty acids to uh, the body uh, according to need. And you can think of glycogen deposits inside cells as a little bit analogous to that. Each cell has an energy store inside itself in the form of these glycogen molecules. Essentially, every cell in the body makes them. Uh, however, the kidney and liver are specifically um, designed, and the liver in particular, much more quantitatively important, to store large amounts of glycogen and then release them on demand. The, this capacity to release uh, glucose from glycogen into the circulatory system is unique to liver and kidney. Cells can't do that. They can take up glucose and they can store it in glycogen, but once they do that, they're committed to use that uh, glycogen polymer uh, to, to, to supply their own glucose needs. In other words, they can't re-export it to other tissues. So it's a really interesting management system. The liver in particular, let's advance to this next image, the liver in particular is designed to store massive amounts of glucose in, in glycogen, so as much more glycogen in it than a typical cell would have up to 10% of its mass. And that uh, uh, the liver can withdraw excess glucose from the circulatory system, store it as glycogen, and then break it down back into glucose and release it into the circulatory system when the other tissues in the body need it. So when we talk about glycogen breakdown, we're talking about every cell in the body. We'll do that first. But then when we talk about glycogen synthesis, that turns out to be uh, every, cell, uh, 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 every cell in the body as well. But there's one detail, one way in which the other cells in the body differ from uh, the liver. The liver has the capacity to take the breakdown product of uh, uh, glycogen hydrolysis, as we'll see, that is ultimately glucose 6-phosphate, cleave that phosphate off and release it into the circulatory system. Other cells in the body outside the liver and to a lesser degree the kidney uh, uh, cannot do that. So these, the liver is a really central player here, okay? And in later topics, we'll come back to the regulatory networks that allow these different tissues to play these different roles. Today, we're going to zero in on the biochemistry of m breaking down glycogen and forming glycogen, and then that briefly that one step that's unique to liver and kidney, allowing you to take glycogen breakdown products and release them into the circulatory system. All right, so let's look at the structure of glycogen that makes all of this possible. So at the, at the microscopic level, so we're starting at microscopic level, we're going to zoom back and look at glycogen uh, from a, a broader view in a moment. It, glycogen is a, a, a branched polymer. So the branches uh, are, are formed by forming 1,6 uh, hemiacetal linkages, 1,6 glycosidic linkages. And notice the 1,6 the linkage here. Notice that the 1, the reducing end, the 1 uh, carbon of the glucose above is bound to the 6 carbon of the glucose below, a 1,6 uh, linkage. And notice that the hydroxyl group is pointing down, so this is an alpha, 1,6 alpha linkage. The polymer itself, the main chain off of which these branches branch, in fact, you are 1,4 linkages. So again, notice that you have the 1 carbon, the reducing uh, end of the uh, glucose on the left in this molecule, bound in glycosidic linkage to the 4, the hydroxyl on the 4 carbon of the um, following glucose. Notice also, in little tiny numbers down there, that the number of glucose monomers on the backbone chain between each branch ranges from about 7 to about 11. So this is a really heavily branched structure. So let's zoom back just a little bit. And here is now glucose. This is a branch point and then symbolize. <laughs>